In this video, I'm gonna show you how to take your truck from this to this. Let's get into it. This day. Our wash base studio is finished. Finally, it's done. It's taken three years to get to this point. I thought it would be like a three month thing at first, you know. Here's what I'm doing today. This truck behind me is from Crestview from Southwick, Massachusetts. These are the guys who helped us get all of our site work done for this project. They helped us a great deal, so I want to hook them up and give them the first wash here in our wash bay. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna do the touchless wash on this and we're gonna do half the truck with a pre-rinse. So we're gonna knock off all the heavy buildup. So there's about a half of an inch of dirt on some spots of this thing behind me. Uh, salt and all kinds of mess on there. And then on the other half, we're gonna do uh, just straight over the dirt with our touchless two steps. And then we'll look at it real close afterwards once it's dry. So we're gonna answer that question and see once and for all, is it better to pre-rinse or not to pre-rinse. I'm not gonna end there though. I'm not just gonna hand it back over to them with a quick 15 minute wash. I wanna go through this thing. So I'm gonna use our interior cleaner on the cab on the inside, and then I'm gonna use our glass cleaner on the windows. I'm gonna hit the cab with detail spray. I'm gonna juice the tires. We're gonna give this thing back to them. Bling it. So I've got my wash cart all loaded up over here. I put everything I could ever imagine to help with today's task on here. So I have my mezzo valve to hold the two foam cannons. I've got a Q coupling on the inlet for this. This is a really nice hardcore disconnect that I use on my lances and on my attachments for our power washer guns here in our bay. My two MTM Hydro PF22s. I've got our Stars and Stripes washes. Now these are the ready to use strength. We sell them in the five gallon size. They're actually designed to be an efficient refill system. This is one gallon of our concentrate Stars and Stripes that come with the kit with the foam cannons. And then you put four parts water in here first, top it off with the gallon, and then that makes the strength that you put into a foam cannon or that you put through a power washer injector. So it's kind of an easy way to not have to measure the foam cannons out every time you refill them. It just speeds up the process and that's really the whole point of the touchless wash. What's nice about this system is that everything's color coordinated. So the mezzo valve has the blue and the red buttons right on it. So you know which soap you're selecting. There's a red soap and a blue soap. Blue soap goes on first and the red soap goes on second. So just top this thing off till the soap starts popping out there. There we go. And here we go. Fill up our step number one. And foam's about to pop out, there we go. All right, now I'm just gonna hook up our foam cannons right onto this valve. This is what this crazy thing looks like. Check this thing out, this thing is so nice. So now I'm just gonna hook it up to my guns and I'm ready to rock and roll. I'm gonna turn these knobs all the way tight and what that's gonna allow for is the fastest draw rate, but that's gonna put the most strength of the soap on, because this thing's pretty dirty. So we'll get into these knobs another time though and what these can do for you. They can actually help you reduce refilling if you know how to use them right. So I'll teach you guys that sometime. Check this out. <laughs> all right, so that's all set. So I like to split it up into small sections so that the soaps don't get a chance to dry. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit half the truck here this way with the soaps. And then I'm just gonna do the, the dump body on this side. It's more difficult to not let the soap dry when it's hot outside and you're in the sunlight. That's why people say to wash in like in uh, not direct sunlight. Being in higher temperatures or in direct uh, you know, light will accelerate how fast things dry. So you wanna do smaller sections. In here, the biggest section I would probably do is half of this whole truck at a time. But for this first wash, I'm just gonna hit it in like quarter sections. Let's see how this thing comes out and uh, see what we can do.
So I'm using a four foot lance. So this is gonna give me just enough reach to do a project like this. With the longer lances, that's where these fittings come in real nice because they're so long that they just don't wear out like the normal quick disconnect inlets. These are on the site now actually. We just released these. the passenger side and now we just got to let that dry because you know everything looks good wet so we're gonna see probably some stuff left over I mean the thing was pretty dirty I do intend to give this thing back to them mint though I'm gonna put whatever elbow grease into this thing I might have to anyways let's get on to the other side I'm gonna knock down and pre-rinse all of the heavy stuff on that side then put the soap on there and we'll see the difference once everything's dry All right, so right now I'm gonna let this thing air dry and just see what the difference is between using soap and not using soap. I might run home and grab my backpack blower. That might be the best way to rinse it out. I gotta dry it off a little faster. It'll probably be wet all day if I don't do that. dried off now and I want to show you guys the difference between using soap and not using soap in a touchless wash. Now it's not going to be pretty. This is not, it's not turning out perfect like 100% of the way there and that's because there's a lot of oxidation on the aluminum, stuff that needs a little more of a heavier treatment which we'll get to that because I've had, I've had a few people give me some shit about oh well, if you're going to rinse within a foot distance and you don't even need soap, what the fuck you snake oil person. And I say you know what, I mean you can get a lot further with soap than without. So I want to show you that difference right now. This is the side where we used stars and stripes. This is like super pretty decent, right? Um, it's not 100% perfect, but it's there. And then some of the runoff from the other side while I was just rinsing. This is the side where I rinsed at like two inches different distance from the surface. And you can just see like a pretty massive difference between using soap and not. I don't have the best water here and I'm using uh, cold water only. I want to see what we can get done on any power washer. So this is the side where no soap was used, just a really close rinse. You can see that, and then over to the side where we use soap. So it's a pretty big difference, honestly. It does do a lot to help get a better finish. And if you look up on the visor, that's the difference between using touchless soap and not. The touchless soap is just gonna help you get that last bit of film off. I think it's pretty useful, I don't know. That's how I roll, that's how I roll. So we did pretty good, man. We got some real nice uh, chrome back onto this thing. Looks like we've got a halfway decent finish. Steps are looking pretty good. This wheel was covered in that axle grease or hub grease or whatever you call it. Where the grease is heavier, it looks like there's a little difference. Cause I think the soaps couldn't contact as well where that really heavy stuff was. 
And there's still a little bit of mess here and there where I missed with the pressure, but pretty good from a distance though. So this uh, body is where you start to see the limits of my touchless system because it's, it's mirror polished safe, which means that it can't be, you know, very aggressive. I mean, there are soaps out there that would get 100% of oxidization off, but it'll take the shine with it. And that's not what I would ever want. Still have some light oxidization at the front here. We got all the, you know, we got the greases and oils out of there. What a difference from, you know, before we did this to after. Real nice. We've got all the junk out of the rubber. The stripes formula is the one that does the most work on the, the tires. On the back here, this is where the heaviest salt optimization was. And you can see that, you know, it's still, I don't know, it kind of looks like shit. I want to do more to this. So I'm going to actually bring in a special guest, the M Shine formula. And that's going to get more of this stuff off of there so that when they pick it up, it'll be like minty fresh. Because this is a short tub system, you know. Touchless washes that are safe on all surfaces like this stuff, they, they only can get you like 90% of the way there, not 100%. You know, we're, we're saying how it doesn't look perfect, but look at the difference between the soap and not the soap. You know, I use the soap on this side, the Stars and Stripes touchless stuff, and then no soap there, same rinse. Like I was saying, we'll, we'll take this 100% of the way there, but great head start, and when we do uh, put a mitt to this thing now, it won't be scratching around any stuff, it'll just be getting right to the real surface of the stuff. surprised that it uh, didn't turn out as good where we pre-rinsed. I would have thought that it would have been a lot better actually. So that was surprising. I've always just used the soap straight onto the vehicle and then rinsed at the end. Unless it's like really hot out and I'm washing outside, I'm trying to cool off the vehicle a little bit. I was really surprised to see that it actually turned out better without pre-rinsing. So I guess that's good because pre-rinsing takes some time and you know, who wants to do that? I mean the whole name of this soap is to just speed up the process. So. I'm gonna keep putting the soap straight onto the vehicle and then rinsing really good and uh, you know save some time. Let's get onto the M Shine now. That's gonna get the oxidization out of that aluminum that the Stars and Stripes didn't handle. We're able to get like 90% of the way there with a touchless system, but I want this thing 100% of the way there for these guys. M Shine. So this stuff is real useful. This can be used anywhere from undiluted all the way up to 100 parts water, but it depends on what you're up against, you know. So this is honestly not horribly bad, but I'm gonna give it a, you know, maybe 10 to 1. I'm not using a brush. I've heard brush is a bad word, you know. I'm using a mitt on a stick. It's got range. Put it on from the bottom to the top. I'm just gonna do the left side. I want to see the difference. Now let's rinse this off, see what we got. All right, let's see what we got here. Look at the difference there. M Shine gets the oxidization out. See, now that's looking like something I'd want to hand back over. hit some of these harder to reach spots with an actual mitt, but I'm gonna throw on these gloves. You'll feel it in whatever cuts during your skin. It's not pleasant. And you should wear gloves anyway when you're handling chemicals like this one. It's pretty strong. That's the M Shine process. We're pretty much done with all of the 
bling kind of uh, cleaning uh, here. I'm gonna pop the hood open now and I'm gonna uh, get in there with some heavy duty degreaser and just uh, give a little tune up. I'm sure it's probably pretty good in there. These guys take great care of their stuff. What do we got in here? Man, there ain't even, there ain't even dust on this thing. <laughs> you know what, I, I can only probably hit like maybe a little bit of in here. Some of the dirt there, I don't know. I'll clean the grease off of that. There we go. All right, cool, we found something. All right, so this is heavy duty. This is our degreaser, which is designed to be as safe on paint as possible, as safe on polished aluminum as possible. All right, here we go. I like to give it a little bit of dwell time. Give it a chance to do its thing. Now I've only got a cold water power washer here because I want to, I want to experience the pain of everyone's uh, what they're dealing with, you know, when the, when they don't have heat. Because heat is u very useful for getting heavy grease off. I mean, um, that's a very important factor. But if you don't have it, a good degreaser will help you keep up. Get all the gunk off of this thing. Look at that, all that stuff just melting right off. Right, let's see what we got here. This thing's all dried off, so that's better. I like that. Not bad for cold water and no contact. And down in here, got a lot of that junk off of there. All that grease and grit and grime gone for good. Not for good, I shouldn't say for good, it'll come right back. Wow. Like brandy new. Wow. All right, this thing's starting to look pretty good on the outside, so now I'm gonna turn my attention to the inside of the thing, hit up the interior, and clean up the floor mats a little bit, the gauges, dashboard, all that, do the glass cleaner. Let's see what we got in here. Oh, yeah, not, not, not bad, but yeah, enough for me to work with, right? So I'm, I'm gonna vacuum this out a little bit and then I'll uh, hit down the interior cleaner on there. Give it a little extra down here. So one nice thing about this stuff is that it can be used on leather leather seats and uh, does a nice job just kind of rejuvenating a little bit. I don't use it on cloth though, because it's just kind of it's a little bit oily. You don't want to use it on cloth. Man, this stuff smells good. I can't wait to see what this driver thinks. Hope he likes everything. It's definitely taken a little bit of time to get this thing cleaned up. I'm ripping through it like it's mine, you know? And I'm having a blast doing it, so it's all good. It's just nice to use all of my own stuff on here and kinda uh, see how, uh, how it does, you know? Oh, good morning. Look at this. This isn't even mine and I love it. So these windows are pretty rough. 
You can see where the edges are, where I got the interior cleaner on the glass. It's all smeary looking. And that's why I do the glass cleaner after, you know? So that's what this is. I got my rag here. This is just a different kind of, a different weave, you know? So this is a real nice rag, rag for uh, glass cleaning. So all I gotta do is just spray down the window and then uh, wipe it down. And I've got a squeegee for the outside. So this glass cleaner is ammonia free and it's safe on tints and it doesn't streak. Very nice. I should probably do the outside of this and leave that right one so you can see the difference. Not bad, a pretty nice uh, difference between the two. A little better. Look at that. Infinity view. Whoa. <laughs> Damn, that's useful. All right, so the next thing I'm gonna do is this stuff here, tire and trim. And this is gonna be awesome because it's salt resistant, it's uh, dirt and dust resistant, mud resistant. It's a great solution. We've got these foam blocks. So there you go. It's just like cutting in when you're painting, you know? It's hard not to get overspray this on everything, but. Man, it got it all over the rim anyway. It looks good though. I'll just wipe off the excess. Okay, so we're done juicing the tires. The last thing now is to just use our polymer detailer spray, and uh, that's a coating that's five times more durable than carnauba wax. So we'll just spray that on there, and then this thing will be 100%. Bam, this is the stuff. So all we gotta do with this is spray it on, and then we level it out with an application microfiber. So that's this gray one here. And then this is a really nice, this is called the Eagle something or other from the rag company. This is a really nice buffing rag. So what this is for is um, after you spray it on, you level it out with this, about one minute later it's gonna get a little bit hazy and that's when you come back with this cloth and you buff it. And that's how you get it streak free. So if you just use one cloth, sometimes you end up chasing streaks, especially if there's any water on the surface already. So you want it bone dry really with this stuff. So almost inevitably whenever you're all dried up from the wash, you're gonna have like some spots where things are still kind of dripping. And that's why this stuff is nice as the final touch up, you know? Yeah, let me show you what I'm talking about when I say let it haze up here. Let me do this. Level it out with this cloth. Now I got just a little bit of haze on here. Now we're ready to go. Nice way to tune everything up. All right. We are at T minus 30 minutes for these people to show up. And so uh, I'm just scraping in. I am, I think I put about 12 hours into detailing this thing, which, uh, you know, I think a lot of that is probably the, um, I mean, that's the overall time I spent on this, you know. So it's not really how long it should take to do this, but setting up the camera and figuring out what to do and all that stuff. And, you know, my leaf blower wasn't starting, all kinds of drama like that, but, but it's been fun. This is like therapy for me. I bet you anything they're gonna tell me I missed a spot. Probably missed more than one.
gonna need some more stuff to wash. If any of you guys wanna swing on in, just shoot us an email, orders at chemx.com. Show us a picture of what you're up against. And I'll give you a tip. It's gotta be real dirty. It can't be a mild situation. We want stuff that's a mess. You know, I've been doing this line of work my whole life. I've washed a lot of trucks, but I've never once charged to wash a truck. So even though I was hooking up these guys and uh, you know, showing appreciation for them helping us with our site work. I'm gonna wash every truck that comes in here for free. All right, well, I'm gonna clean up my floor in here now. Give me a subscribe or something, you know? Help me out. Throw me a like. Jesus Christ. A lot of work.